is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logo that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? It's Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with a quick video. We're going to talk about Ryan Saunders. I, I think this is an interesting topic because they had Tom Thibodeau there. Tom Thibodeau was able to get them to the playoffs. One of the biggest things for them to do, even though they only won one games in the playoffs, it was a, a sign that they was going in the right direction, being able to have a guy like Jimmy Butler come there, play at an all-NBA, all-star level. Not only that, you have Towns, who has proved that he's one of the best, not big men, but one of the best players in the entire NBA. A guy that can handle the ball a little bit, knock down threes, post up, um, mid-range pull-ups, even roll to the rim, get lobs and dunks. But only, not only that, the guy can shoot free throws at a high efficiency level. So you have a masterpiece right there, a guy that can do anything, a guy that's respected around the league, and a guy that can really dominate a game once he has that mentality. He showed that he had that mentality at the end of the season, um, and he's going to have to need that if he wants to carry this team and get the best out of himself. Because Towns, nobody can stop this guy. He can get any shot that he wants. He's just that good. And the fact that he can shoot makes him even tougher to guard because he's so mobile and athletic. And then you look at Wiggins. I feel like Ryan Saunders has to do better with this roster if they're going to keep him permanently. Because when you look at this roster, players are not playing to their full potential. And to me, you have to discipline your players for that you can't just let Andrew Wiggins have the type of season that he is having these last couple years I feel like Tom Thibodeau didn't find a good way to utilize Andrew Wiggins but neither did Saunders and if they're going to get the best out of this team they don't really have that much cap space when they sign Towns to his after his rookie his rookie extension basically after they sign Towns to his rookie extension, they're not going to have that much cap space to really offer anybody any real money. Plus, people don't really want to go to Minnesota. That's why it was smart for them to trade for a player like Jimmy Butler while Towns is still under his rookie contract. But since Andrew Wiggins is only ma already making $25 million, plus Jeff T does come off the books, and so does Taj Gibson, and then you don't really need Gorgie Dane, and you do want to keep guys like Covington and guys like obviously um um what's his name Dario Saric you want to keep those two guys then you're gonna to have to pay pay a pretty penny because Dario Saric he's gonna be off his his rookie scale contract you're gonna to have to sign him to an extension and if you want to keep Covington that's gonna cost you ten million to keep him even though I would because he fits what they're trying to do and he gives floor spacing for guys like Towns to be able to post up and he's a deadly three-point shooter and obviously Dario Sarge is a guy that can handle the ball he's a guy that can play off the ball and knock down threes play that three or four position giving them a lot of versatility plus I don't really think Dario Sarge is a max player at this point so they're going to have the ability to sign and keep him because he's going to be on restrict he's going to be restricted so you're going to be able to match an offer anyway if somebody offer him more money than you do but I think they should definitely keep those two guys they traded for them plus they fit around this team but you're going to have to find a way to get better use out of this roster i feel like they have a lot of players on this roster that doesn't contribute they doesn't play well they don't fit well and if you want to try to build a roster that can make the playoffs those things are essential having the chemistry having the ability to know what personnel you're going to use what lineups going to work who fits and who don't you can't just have a bunch of talent just gathered together and think you're going to win now, i think a lot of people see that they're not too far off from being a playoff team. And I think that if you feel that way, it's true. They won 36 games last year, and they had a lot of turmoil. They had to learn how to adjust with a lot more talent. They lost Jimmy Butler and got off to a bad start. But if they add a, a central piece that can really fit, plus the chemistry that they built playing in these last couple months of the season, I feel like they should be able to get to off to a better start. Plus, they should be able to get somebody 
that can really take that point guard position because I don't think T should be brought back because he's not the point guard of the future. If you can't find that in the draft or you can't move up in the draft, you definitely have an abundance of free agents this summer that are at the point guard position that can give you an upgrade over T. T is a guy that is not really known as for his aggression. He doesn't attack that much, and he doesn't continue to put pressure on the defense. Plus, he can't really create a shot outside of getting a floater or a layup. He can knock down spot of shots off the dribble, but it's not efficient or good enough. He, he's a point guard that can be solid for you. He can be a starting point guard, but he's not a championship point guard at this point in time because he is older. Plus, he just lacks the aggressiveness. He seems like he settles. He's indecisive. And sometimes that can hurt your team because you need him to do more than just look for the pass or look to move the ball. You need him to attack and put pressure on the defense and force them to make decisions, which sometimes he do, especially years ago. But he seems like he's more of a six seven man on the bench now at this point of his career now another team I want him to be a starter but if you really want to build this team you got to use your money wisely to really put the right point guard with this team so they can grow but not only that they can get a better use out of him and fit the timeline of Wiggins and Towns if you're going to keep both of them but if you're going to keep both of them, you're going to need Andrew Wiggins to step up a lot more. This is a guy that's a number one pick. This is a guy that's making $25 million a year. And the problem is he's only 24. Ain't like Andrew Wiggins is this old player that is on a decline. This is a guy that hasn't even turned 30. He's not even close to 30 at this point and he just turned 24 this year so he won't turn 25 into next year he averaged 20 points a game in um, April but you need a larger picture of that he averaged 19 a game in March but you're going to need more than that because he averaged 15 and 16 in February he averaged 21 in January you're going to need more of that but you're going to need him to be more efficient you're going to need him to feel like he's necessary if you're paying a guy 25 million you took him number one overall and this is a franchise that's not too far from being the playoff team perennially you're going to need somebody to help towns out in bases you're going to need that second star and Andrew Wiggins is supposed to be this this, is, this was supposed to be Andrew Wiggins franchise Andrew Wiggins got drafted before Towns. He was already a rookie of the year before Towns. He was already a rookie sophomore MVP before Towns. This was a guy that showed that he can be a 20-point scorer and has done that. He had averaged 20 points, like I said, in April. He can do this. The problem is he just don't have that competitiveness. He don't have that desire to be great. You have to go out there and prove that you're the number one pick, and he has done that. But when it comes to elevating his game, taking quality shots, being able to play off the ball to fit and mesh with Towns, is either they're going to have to figure out a better way to utilize him or a better way to motivate him and let them know that they need him to be better than what he's been playing. And I feel like if they do that, then they're going to have to make a trade. If you're not going to be able to earn your money and go out here and play the, the way you're capable of playing on a consistent basis to get us where we need to go we might have to go in a different direction and i think that they have to look at that because wiggins is young he still does hold value and 25 million ain't that bad for a guy that's averaging 20 points a game at 24 he still has upside and he's still gonna have interest around the league it's not like he's making 30 to 40 million 25 is not that bad in today's nba especially for a guy that can give you 20 points a game on any team given the opportunity but the problem is you need more of that consistently you need it more efficiently plus you need him to develop a consistent three-point shot and you need him to have that hunger to want to be great to push himself and to put his team over the top you needed Wiggins to become either the number one option or the perfect option around under town you need him to be that penny you need him to be that kobe you need him to be that tracy mcgrady with y'all mean you need him to be that guy that can create shots for himself and others be a solid defender to a great defender when he got drafted everybody expected wiggins to be a great perimeter defender he hasn't became close to that people feel like he can be that guy that can be a number one option he has shown that he can do it but he hasn't been able to do it consistently he hasn't been able to do it efficiently and he hasn't dominated enough now i still haven't gave up on wiggins because he is young and i think he will eventually get it unless he's just going to bounce around the league and be a guy that people respect people need to play i mean going to keep on a roster but not a guy that people want them 
beat want him to be on the roster for long term. He can be a Tobias Harris, a guy that we all respect, we all know can play, but nobody wants to give him the commitment because he might not be a superstar player. And even if he is, do you really think he can be your number one option? If he can't be your number one option, he's an asset that can be moved to any team that needs. And you see Philly took him, Clippers took him, but none of them have really committed to him just yet. And even if they do, remember, Orlando committed to him and traded him to Detroit. Detroit traded him. He got traded again. They got traded again. So I think Wiggins can be one of those guys that you know you and you know he can play. You know that he, he's a good player around this league, but is he really the number one option? Can, is he a really number two or is he a number three? And I feel like that's the sad part. You shouldn't feel like a number one pick that everybody thought was consensus and everybody thought he was going to be the best player in the draft due to potential. And even though he has lived up to a lot of that hype, becoming a 20-point scorer multiple times, he still has never been dominant and he still has never took that next level step to be an all-star or even a superstar player which you expect from your number one pick and you can obviously tell because Towns has already been an all-star and an all-NBA player these last two years because he's going to be all-NBA and all-star this year too and if that's the case then he has lived up to his hype the only problem is they only made it to the playoffs once with two one number one picks and even though they have the 11 pick that's not going to really change their future because a lot of people feel like that's going to be a weak draft so if they can't move up in the draft to select somebody else that can really change their fortunes then they're stuck with a player that got to be developed and right now you're trying to win with towns and prove that you can win with him and you're trying to keep him. You're not trying to make him leave and make him one of the more overrated players because they're not making the playoffs and they're not really doing anything in the Western Conference. But could pile in a bunch of losses, then you're not going to really do much to keep Towns and you might lose him in the future because nobody really wants to go to Minnesota at first. Number two, if you're not winning, he's not going to want to stay. And three, can you really get free agents to come to help him if you can't develop and get great players in the draft? And if all that's true, it's going to be a key to losing town. So let me know what you guys think. Is this the right move to keep Ryan Sanders, a guy that has not been known to coach playoff teams, have not been really known as a great coach? Um, obviously, they did some things right, but they have a lot more work to do building this roster, and they have a lot more work to do if they really want to be a serious perennial uh, playoff team. But until then, they have a lot of work to do. And if this is a guy, a young guy that knows a little bit about basketball and he can grow and relate to the players, then that's a strong thing. But if he's not stern enough and he's not pushing them enough, then this can be a mediocre to terrible team and they can be stuck in the middle of nowhere. And that's not where you want to be with an all-star player um, that has the ability to leave because he is locked up long term. So teams would love to trade for Towns. The fact that he's under 25, plus he's already on a long term deal. Plus, even if they trade for him, they'd be able to offer him a fifth year because they can trade for him before his last year in Minnesota. That just gives you more reasons to know that people want him. But Wiggins has the same ability and Wiggins has the same type of contract coming up. I mean, already. So he's going to be a guy that either going to be moved or he's going to step his game up. And that has a lot to do with Ryan Sanders. How are you going to utilize him? How are you going to keep him involved? And how can you make these two guys mesh since you don't have other guys? You have some good role players. You have some good players that can um, play above their contract. But you still need Wiggins to step his game up to another level. And you need Towns to continue to dominate on the level that he dominated in the last couple months. And if that's the case, it's going to be a fun team to watch. They're going to be a fun team to stop. I mean, to keep keeping up on. But the problem with them is, will they ever take that next step and become back a playoff team? That's going to be the question. And if Ryan Sanders is going to be their coach, let me know if you think he can do it or do you think they just can't find nobody better or you think that they should give him a chance because he showed that they have improved a little bit the last couple months. But it's a whole new season. You have to have new talent and you have to have a better roster. You can't keep flipping back the same roster every year, and they got key free agents leaving on this roster. So how are you going to rebuild? How are you going to make this team better to be prepared to make the playoffs next year? And that's going to be tough for them to do, but that's why I brought it up. Check, check out my website, analysisplayground.com. A link will be in the description in the comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. 
Link will be in the description and comment section below. Thanks for everybody that likes on Facebook. Thanks for everybody that continues to watch my videos on YouTube, that likes on YouTube, that comments on YouTube and keep the activity going. Um, if you're new to the channel, check out my website, check out my Facebook page and buy the merchandise. Thanks for everybody that's been buying the merchandise. Not only that, I also got to say, um, I do video just like this like discussions i also do breakdowns of players rookies obviously nba breakdowns of the legends i also cover the draft summer league i cover all things nba so if you're new to the channel and you like this video check out my playlists and if you like my playlists all you have to do is subscribe and if you like those other videos binge watch i put them up there for a reason so you can enjoy and i love making these videos you guys enjoy watching that's why i continue to go and let me know should they keep saunders is it a mistake let keeping them is it a good thing that they keeping them and can towns and wiggins coexist and how should they build the roster and with who they should go for at that point guard position i think those are the key problems is saunders the guy can they get another point guard and can towns and wiggins coexist and those are going to be the biggest question marks going into next season can they figure it out before towns is gone they got a couple more years to do that but it goes by fast can they uh, please towns can they put a competitive team around them they made a trade for butler but couldn't keep them there now they got to find somebody else that can take that spot or Wiggins going to have to step up. Let me know you think he can.